We're really excited to have built this data over time to actually understand for teams that are focusing on the release process and improvements there, what they stand to gain. We understand coming from the mobile world and now working with so many different teams, there is a lot of complexity in mobile releases that has a domino effect across your entire sort of team and org in process. There's a lot more wasted time and effort spent on releases than a lot of teams realize. That creates a real cost to the business. It's something you should care about, but it's often not prioritized. It's not looked at closely. What do you stand to gain? What can your team actually achieve if you focus on release management? The first chart here is looking at time spent in releases. Pretty straightforward. The y-axis is this sort of normalized multiple. We call it understanding that there are a number of teams represented here and a wide range of ways of releasing and normal sort of values for a given team. We need to normalize that to be able to compare trends. So the y-axis on all the charts here is looking at a delta from an average for a team. So relative to their average over the period, is this release trending above or below for a given metric? So that's what's being compared on the y-axis there. X-axis is time. So as teams have spent more time working with us and releasing with Runway, this is the evolution of these metrics. So the first one here, time spent in releases, we found that teams from starting with us over time are ending up spending about a fifth, 20% less time in releases. A lot of benefit there. Your team, as long as you have a release in cycle, there is attention being paid there. There's the extra mental load and also actual tasks being done for the release. If you can shorten the actual duration of your release cycles, you're earning time back to spend on your product, to spend on sort of core activities in cases where maybe you have platform folks or senior folks that are tending to releases. That's really valuable time that's unlocked for other initiatives. We have found that over time, teams are able to cut their time to recovery from unhealthy releases by 32%. That means not just you're shipping hot fixes quicker, but these improvements are also coming from attention paid to other parts of your release cycle, like monitoring and running rollouts. If you do staged rollouts, it means not just the ability to release quicker, but also the ability to catch issues with releases more quickly to triage more quickly. And then of course, start spinning up a hot fix. A little more on the product side and looking at how your team is actually delivering value to users. Teams over time with a focus on release management are cutting their product lead time is essentially what this is measuring by about 14%. So it's not just a matter of your releases are speeding up themselves, but if you think about how product actually gets built and shipped at your org, this is spanning multiple releases, right? And so what we're measuring is across all the work that's shipping with any given release, we look at the code, we see related project management tickets, and we see when those tickets were first created, the product conception point. Measuring that time and seeing it decrease is actually quite powerful. This is across sprints, this is across releases, this is affecting your whole product roadmap, right? The ability for product to actually get changes, new features, fixes out to users. Another metric here has to do with on-time releases and predictability around releases. That's important, again, across the team. It's not just about being more efficient in releases, getting them out sooner. You also want the wider org to know when things are shifting and to make that predictable and easily understandable across the team. We have found over time that teams focusing on mobile release management are kicking off on time almost 30% more often. Think about the domino effect that comes with this, right? Every time you're missing a release kickoff or a deadline to cut a release. You have this snowball effect. Folks are more likely to come and try to squeeze more work into the release, further delaying it. You have these sort of missteps or misalignment across teams when you're expecting to ship a given thing to users. And there's also a lot of sort of jeopardy for upcoming releases, delays that end up happening after the one release that has been delayed. Another topic that we look at a lot is how teams operate their release trains if you're on a train model or how you safeguard the diff, the changes that you're shipping with each release. Again, important because there is this correlation between release size, release diffs, late arriving changes and quality. It can affect the quality of what you ship, either that or it means you're having a lot of last minute scrambles. You're asking a lot of QA or engineers if you're doing your own QA 
to make sure that late changes have been fully validated. And when you integrate it all, that you are actually validating a new RC and putting it through its paces. So a lot of reasons why you'd want to safeguard your diffs quite religiously. And so we have found over time that teams focusing on the release management, focusing on this part of the process, are able to reduce late arriving commits. That's commits that are landing post kickoff, post cut by 16%. So again, bringing that down is safeguarding app quality, but also saving the team from the stress and the scramble that comes with dealing with these late changes. The last highlight here has to do with this comparison. We're looking at teams that have been focusing on release management comparing that to teams across the app store charts. We have found in a number of areas that teams that have been focusing on their release management with us are performing better than what we can discern from version history and trends in the app stores. So you can see release frequency, the cadence of releases for our cohort compared to other top 20 apps in the charts is almost 30% higher time to recovery, 10% quicker. And the last one there, the number of hot fixes that are being shipped so the measure of release failure rate, change failure rate is almost a quarter lower compared to even top charting apps. So I think all of that sort of goes to show you can be a mature, high performing team that still has a lot to gain. If you choose to focus in on release management, there's some real upside here.